<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Cough, cough, beginning of the bit, cough, cough. Well then, bun Elon Musk, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, write what you know. Maxwell can not make uh, uh, chainsaw noises in the background while I'm recording the podcast. I would appreciate that. Thanks. Hey, people always say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I've been a loyal, if scattered employee at my local bookstore for almost 17 years. Yes. I just have to last for three more years and a couple of months. And I get a, I get like a, I get like a, like a trophy. Yeah. And I get a special card that gives me the employee discount for the rest of my life. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, and then if, if I work uh, eight more years, I think I get a gold watch, like an old person. <laughs> nice. So I'm pretty excited. Um, but I'm not old. I would like to take this time to say I'm not old. I actually started with this company when I was 12. Yes. So it all checks out. Mm -hmm. And as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here. To thrust my moist fingers in your ear holes with this week's unforgettably forgettable installment of Notes from the Bookstore. And it's clearance time at your local bookstore. Oh. Clearance time is a popular time for both customers and employees. Clearance is something that we do a few times a year. It's when we gather up all of the items in the store that literally no one wants anymore. <laughs> we slap a sticker on them, we discount them, and then we trick customers into wanting old products that they now have to buy because, ooh, it's such a deal. Yeah. It's, it's popular with customers because they think they're saving so much money, and it's popular with employees because finally we can get rid of all of these secret life of pets toys. Would one of these books be... Would one of these books be Pokemon Go for Dummies? Um, we we do have Pokemon Go books. That 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 is a thing, and I'm in a top secret uh, Facebook group with other employees of this bookstore chain, which yes. will remain nameless. And one of them recently got in. It was a special order. Buckle up, by the okay. way. It was a book on fidget spinners. Oh. It was called Fidget Spinners Tips and Hacks. Tips and Hacks. Yeah. Spin it. I... So fidget spinner books are apparently a thing now. The thing is, is that there's a thing called print on demand, which basically means that... that um, it, it, like a, it's like a pay for play thing. Yeah. Like the book actually doesn't exist until it's paid for, and the publisher prints out one specifically for you and sends it to your house. Basically, anyone can be an. Basically, anyone can be an author now. Yeah. So any book can exist. <laughs> so it, when I saw this book on fidget spinners, I I was like, okay, this definitely wasn't published by any sort of major publisher. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a print on demand. But there are Pokemon Go books out there. We also we we actually had back in the day when I was still in California, we had the book Farmville for Dummies. Really? Yeah. That is frightening. Yeah. Farmville for Dummies. That just blew my mind. Blew my mind. But yeah, we're getting we're getting rid of a lot it. Of better secret. have a lot of pictures. That's all I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. that anybody who would need to buy that book would not be able to read that book. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, fun. Mm -hmm. But but the times they are a changing at your local bookstore because this year our clearance sale 
is a wee bit different. See, for years, for years and years and years, our clearance sale started at 50% off. Mm-hmm. Then after two or three weeks at, at 50, it, it goes to 75 for like a week or two. And then it goes to $2. And uh, it's always ridiculous when it goes down to two dollars because a lot of times the the stuff that we have on clearance is like bookmarks and stuff. It's like okay, here's a four dollar and ninety five bookmark that no one ever bought. Now it's fifty percent off. Now it's seventy five percent off. Now it's two dollars. <laughs> Which I would imagine for a bookmark, it would have gone up in price, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, no. There's a lot of things that go up in price when it comes to the two dollar, when it comes to the two dollar period. But we have trained, we have subconsciously trained our uh, our customers to expect our clearance sale to be this specific way because this is how we've done it for years and years and years and years and years. But apparently. The suits up at corporate are really tightening our subconscious uh, corporate belt. So now this this time clearance is a wee bit different. Clearance is starting now at one percent off, okay. and then after two months it goes down to three percent off, and then three weeks later it goes to seven percent off, and then two days later it goes back to three percent off. Okay. So we should be getting to 75% off sometime around 2019. Yeah. So if you want any Star Trek Beyond or Avengers Age of Ultron bobbleheads, <laughs> come on down to your local bookstore. Mm-hmm. It's always weird what, what they choose to be in clearance because we don't choose what gets to be in clearance. It's like, I don't know, some automated system, some uh, bored person in New Jersey. Yeah. Like, like... uh some of the Funko Pops are on sale, but not all of the Funko Pops are on sale. Like, not all of the Save by the Bell Funko Pops are on sale. Just <laughs> the one black girl. <laughs> so if anyone out there is a big uh, Lisa Turtle fan, now's the time to come on down to your local bookstore. In the same way, if you watch uh, uh, Once Upon a Time on ABC, but you're only a fan of Regina, yes, now's the time to come down to your local bookstore. If you want any other Once Upon a Time characters, don't go to your local bookstore. We yeah. only have Regina on sale, and don't and don't expect Screech on clearance. Oh, no, nope. because that's, nope. that's Screech has become collectible ever since he cut a bitch. Yeah, no, you ain't getting Screech. No. Are you kidding me? No. Lisa Turtle. Mm-hmm. I believe she is the African-American one. Speaking of suits, we have recently been handed down an edict from on high that makes a great shift in what we're supposed to be focusing on. It's really weird. Anyway, um, previously, the number one priorities in the store were selling our membership cards and making sure no one wore flair on their name tag lest the secret book police kidnaps them and sends them to the corporate secret re- literary camps in the hills of New Jersey. I don't know if they have hills in New Jersey, but I'm moving on. <laughs> now we've been given a new priority and it's a bit odd. Magazines! Okay. Number one priority for us. Magazines are odd too because we get them in bulk. Yeah. And I would like to once again take this time to state that the views and opinions expressed on this podcast are entirely fictional and are in no way representative of any major corporation whatsoever. So we get magazines in bulk. Yeah. Monday, we'll get one box of random magazines. Tuesday, maybe we'll get five or six boxes of magazines. Wednesday, maybe we'll get one. Maybe we'll get zero boxes. Thursday, we'll get zero boxes. Friday, the UPS, the FedEx driver shows up like... Here's 24 boxes. Have fun this weekend. <laughs> so we put out the weeklies first. That's like the Rolling Stones, the Newsweeks, the Times, the Piopples. Yeah. The Oos Magazine, Entertainment Weekly. Uh, and the others, it may take a day or two or three, but we'll do it. We get a lot of magazines, especially on Friday. So Friday and Saturday and, and Sunday, we're working trying to get the massive amount of magazines out. But we do it. Mm-hmm. We do it. Interesting, interesting story. At my first store in, in Phoenix, Arizona, 
there were two receiving managers and they would literally stop everything they were doing when they got a box of magazines that featured Wizard World comic book magazine. <laughs> it was really weird. Like they had to, they would stop everything they're doing and and look in the box to see if there was a new issue of Wizard. And if Wizard co- comic book magazine was in there, they would immediately turn to the comic in the middle of the magazine and read it. Yeah. <laughs> really bizarre. Eleanor's pissed. Um, what is Eleanor pissed? <sighs> Eleanor! Eleanor, come here! Come here! Let me cheer you up! Mommy's doing stuff! What's wrong? Come here! Eleanor! I know, right? She's Rodan now. She's just going around screeching. You can say mama. I know you can. Yeah, she can say mama, dada, burlap sack. I can't sing. I can't sing Maxwell. Well, Maxwell's a difficult one because the X in the middle. You could even say Maxwell for the long time. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. (laughs) So... So it's always been the general consensus, no matter the store, but the consensus has been that magazines is a section that you don't have to focus too hard on. I mean, it's a very small price point. There's there's not – magazines aren't any sizable per- percentage of sales. Yeah. So you don't have to spend too much time there. Like, don't get lost in magazines, I always heard. Well, now, apparently – our stupid sewing magazines and prepper porn magazines and chicken coop monthly are now apparently our number one priority. <laughs> apparently the suits believe that the reason we don't make a ton of money off of $3 and 98 cent prize priced magazines is because we're not taking magazines seriously enough. So this, so now if we get a box of magazines, here's what we're supposed to do. Here's, here's the new, like what we're supposed to do. We get one box of magazines. We immediately alert the MOD about the one box of magazines that we got in. Mm -hmm. Then the MOD calls the store manager who then calls the district manager who then informs the regional manager who then calls the CEO who then sends a telegraph to the inventor of books who then sends a carrier pigeon to the widow of the late great letter Q Uh informing her that the store in nowhere, Oklahoma got one box of wooden boat magazine. Yeah. Then, yeah, one whole box of Wooden Boat magazine. It's really big here because we're in a landlocked state. (laughs) Then all booksellers are to drop everything and shelve the magazines while whipping themselves. Yes. It sounds a bit extreme to me. Self-flagellation. I wasn't sure how to spell flagellation, so I just wrote whipping themselves. (laughs) So you really helped me out there, honey. I totally would have forgotten that. Way to way to bring me back, honey. And literally, we're supposed to drop everything. If we're helping a 69-year-old woman from Boise who's mm-hmm. interested in travel books about Branson, we are ordered to slap the customer hard in the face and run to receiving, screaming, All hail magazines! <laughs> And I, for one, am glad. Focusing a massive amount of time and effort on low-priced magazines, what could go wrong? Mm -hmm. That's just great corporate strategy. Yes. It sounds like they're still that cheap? Uh, Yes. Like four bucks? Yeah, magazines are still... Like $4.95, $5.95, yeah. 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 Wow. I will. I I don't give a crap about magazines. I will occasionally read like a like a horror hound or like a room morgue because I was in that one. Yeah. I always grab Entertainment Weekly and Rolling Stone whenever they come out. Other than that, that's about it. I might read a random Mother Jones or Bloomberg Business Week article. Mm-hmm. Because I'm old. But beyond that, I I don't really care. It, it's interesting because a, the magazines that a store carries differs based on what's popular in that store you know it really is sort of a regional thing there are magazines that we got in california that we don't carry in oklahoma and and vice versa for example in california we constantly carried 40 in times magazine oh god yeah 
for weirdos. Yeah. We also always carried Bazaar magazine, and and those just do not exist in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, it's all uh, hunting magazines, gun magazines, and frickin' craft magazine for <laughs> old women. And that's the majority of what we get. Yeah. So it's interesting what we do get and what we don't get, and that kind of differs, and yada, yada, yada. Eleanor, stop screeching. It's okay. It gets better. I'm lying to you. It gets worse. It gets worse. You were? It gets really? so much worse. You Eleanor. weren't going at the table to try to eat it without my permission? Uh, hold on a second, buddy. Don't fall off the couch, okay? Don't right. fall off Get the out. Couch. Go. Just okay, go. that's an order. Don't fall off the couch. Maxwell, good. Thank you, Maxwell. Wait, let's talk about some bestsellers right All now. Right. Um, Oprah announced her new book club selection. Uh, she's going in a bit of a different direction this time. Uh, Oprah's new book club selection is called The Big Book of Lesbian Horse Erotica. Ah. Oh. Kind of a surprise choice for Oprah. Mm-hmm. For Harpo there. That is, is an actual but, but... But I, just to, I could see it coming. Yeah, I could see. Just it to be clear, that is an actual book that we did carry in California, the <laughs> big book of lesbian horse erotica. <laughs> I think she's upset because you're not with her. Oh, they headbutted each other. Well, she was crying like that even before they headbutted each other. You are crying like that. I am crying. She's like been that. crying like that for hours. Very difficult. Always have homework. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to school to try to butter myself. I can butter you if you want. We've got a lot of butter, honey. <laughs> and I'm even talking about food butter, not anything dirty. Well, I mean, I'm not. At first. Yeah, at first. That's definitely a Japanese website right there. American woman with butter. <laughs> dot JP. That's just uh, Paula Dean. That's just Paula Dean, yeah. Paula Dean erotica. That definitely exists somewhere. Just FYI. Newt Gingrich. Yes. A Fraggle Rock Gorg gone hardcore conservative has a new book has a new best-selling book out. It's called Understanding Trump. That's the actual title yes. of the book. That's a good title. The original title was Newt Gingrich's Why Trump Isn't Like a Complete Dick. <laughs> the book is a special guide for white people who are starting to think, wow, maybe Donald Trump isn't the nice, kind, gentle, smart, Christian paragon of virtue that he said he was. I... I already know how to understand Trump so I don't need his book Stop. Yeah. what you do is you get a wire coat hanger and you open that up and on one end you make a hook okay yeah yeah and then you shove it up your nostril and then you you keep shoving it up there and you're gonna get some resistance but yeah. sooner or later, there'll there'll be like a snap, and once you that snap, that the, you can get the coat hanger into your into your brain cavity, okay, and up into the frontal lobe, and then you can spin the coat hanger, okay, yeah, yeah. and then pull it back out, and now Trump makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically, basically, the book is is kind of like a cat poster for conservatives. <laughs> you know, it's just, just just to help white people be comfortable with the whole Donald Trump thing. Like chapter one, he's not that dumb. <laughs> Chapter one. It's not that stupid. I mean, sure, is, is, is that an actual stupid. chapter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> chapter two. He's not that much of a rapist. You get the general idea. Yes. You know? 
Yeah. She's a murderer. Yeah. You, you, you get the general. You get the gist of it. Mm-hmm. And finally this week. And then, one- and then from there, it's just, it's just pictures of starving, emaciated old ladies dying in hospitals. Yeah. For them yeah. to whack off to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and finally this week, once again, I would like to add, I would like to address a persistent rumor. Once again, I'd like to clear the air here. No, we haven't gotten any more fidget spinners in stock. Mm-hmm. No, we did not recall the ones that we had in stock. And no, the fidget spinners we sold are not coming alive and attacking people. I'm not even sure how these crazy uh, baseless rumors get started. Now, it's on not me, unrelated... man. It's not me. Okay, good, good. Definitely now, on me. an unrelated topic, a completely unrelated topic, if you did buy a fidget spinner at one of our stores, please do not get it wet. Do not leave it unsupervised, especially around your credit cards. And whatever you do, do not ask the fidget spinner about Operation Red Hat. No. I repeat, do not mention Operation Red Hat to your (laughs) fidget spinner. Okay? Do not. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, do not ask it about Operation Red Hat. I, I cannot be more clear about that and that is it from notes from the bookstore this week and remember boys and girls and assorted you too can save 10 percent on all of your purchases by buying a 25 dollars membership card it's not free that was borders okay <laughs> our card costs money sure theirs was free now they're out of business <laughs> so well but that's because they didn't push the magazine. Yeah, that's because they yeah, that's because they weren't focusing enough on magazines. And also they had no online presence, but primarily the magazines. Mm-hmm. In fact, if there was any reason why Borders closed down, it was because Borders was very successful and people really loved their stores and it, it was a it was a huge huge massive company. And but then the big nail in the coffin for Borders was the fact that at story time, I started playing a character called the evil and sinister Dr. Borders with a Z and in no way related to the bookstore of similar name. Yes. That is when people started saying, hey, Borders kind of sucks. <laughs> it wasn't until I saw Steve's amazing portrayal of the evil and sinister Dr. Borders with a Z and in no way related to the bookstore of similar name that I realized I'm never going to shop at Borders again. That's right. So it really was me. After they closed down, I considered creating a new supervillain character called Dr. Amazon, but spelled different. Yeah. That would be his actual name, Dr. Amazon, but spelled different. You see, you see, that's the thing, though. Um, I, I actually used to go to Borders quite a lot. Okay. So when borders closed down i was like oh oh really you think you you know what i'm boycotting you and i've boycotted them since that day that's good i still don't go into a borders that's good i'm glad to hear that i'm glad to hear that i'll i'll teach them for going out of business i used to go to borders all the time in fact that is where i bought ultraman uh huh. I bought Ultraman for the entire series of the first run of Ultraman for five dollars. Nice. Four oh DVDs. Four DVDs. Hours of entertainment <laughs> for five dollars, and the greatest thing I've ever purchased at a Borders. I'm so happy, and I'll, they'll always be in my heart for that because I still watch that DVD. I love, freaking love. Ultraman. I know you hate me for that, Bella, but God, I love Ultraman. Using the beta capsule, Hayata now transforms into Ultraman! (laughs) And he flies and commits genocide. I I like the Ultraman that dies, though. Oh, the Ultraman that dies? Hayata. 
And don't Hoshino. forget Hoshino, the short short, the short shorted Japanese boy. Hoshino, Hoshino, oh, oh, no. Hoshino. You know you love Hoshino. <laughs> That's right, Maxwell. <laughs>